Hi, my name's Sally Freeman, and I'm one of the nurses in the Communicable Disease Team at the Central Coast Public Health Unit. This resource is for directors of childcare facilities who report gastroenteritis outbreaks to our team. It's designed to help you understand how to report to our team and when you should be worried about the outbreak that you are seeing in your facility. As you are aware, gastroenteritis is a notifiable condition for childcare centres to report to public health. A gastro outbreak occurs when two or more children or staff have a sudden onset of vomiting or diarrhoea in a two day period. If you do not meet this definition, but are concerned about what you are seeing in your childcare centre, please submit a report to public health and we will get back to you with our suggested course of action. So how do you report a gastroenteritis outbreak to public health? Central Coast Public Health Unit is changing the way childcare centres report gastroenteritis outbreaks to our service. We have developed an online reporting survey. This report can then be submitted on any IT device at a time that is convenient to you, even if it is outside of our usual business hours. Once the survey has been completed, resources will automatically be sent to you by the email provided in the survey. This will provide you with the resources that you can start to implement to respond to your outbreak. Routine reporting will then continue once a week for the duration of your outbreak. This will be done through a sister survey that is in the link provided of the original email and prompts will be sent out to you on a weekly basis. You can also report to our unit if you are worried. Public Health can still be contacted during business hours on 4320-9730 or via the email provided below. So how does this new reporting system work? Once you have submitted your initial report to the Public Health Unit, this will be reviewed by a member of our team. Should our team have any concerns with the report that's been submitted, they will be in touch with your facility to discuss actions to move forward. In addition to this, there will be weekly updates provided by your facility. These updates provide an opportunity for you to update the Public Health Unit on the current number of cases in your facility and any concerns. We would ask that if you are concerned at any time about your outbreak or need further support, you get in touch with our team or submit an additional report. This will allow our team to review your outbreak and provide you with guidance and support during this time. Should you feel that your outbreak meets the criteria for closure or it has been greater than five days since your last case, submit a report. The Public Health Unit will then contact you and advise if your outbreak can be closed and you can cease all measures currently in place at your facility. Some of the key resources that childcare centre directors should be aware of when managing their gastroenteritis outbreaks include the Staying Healthy in Child Care, New South Wales Health Gastro Pack for Child Care Centres and the New South Wales Health Viral Gastroenteritis Fact Sheet. These resources provide a step-by-step -step process for addressing the outbreak in your facility and how to respond moving forward. So why is gastroenteritis notifiable to the public health unit? There are two main causes of vomiting and diarrhoea with children, viral gastroenteritis and non-viral gastroenteritis. Viral gastro is by far the most common. The public health unit are worried about non-viral gastroenteritis outbreaks, in particular foodborne outbreaks, which may have been initiated from within the centre. It can be difficult to distinguish between viral and non-viral outbreaks. However, there are some key distinguishing signs and symptoms. In viral gastroenteritis, kids often get sick quick and get better quick. Vomiting and diarrhoea are the most common symptoms. Children are rarely hospitalised with viral gastro, and when they are, it is usually for dehydration. Viral gastro is highly transmissible and easily spread from person to person within the facility. Large numbers of cases of children and, ad and staff members across the facility can be common. However, these are often spread out over days to week. 
non-viral pathogens such as bacteria, toxins and parasites cause non-viral gastroenteritis and often have a more severe clinical course. Vomiting and diarrhea are still common, but it is also not uncommon to see fever and or bloody diarrhea. Prolonged illness is more likely and can require hospitalisation. We would be worried if these were the predominant signs and symptoms that you were seeing in your facility. The Public Health Unit are also concerned about possible foodborne outbreaks. These present much the same as bacterial gastroenteritis. Vomiting and diarrhoea, sometimes bloody diarrhoea, can be seen. If you are worried about your outbreak, please discuss this with the Public Health Unit. So as a facility director, when should you worry about your gastroenteritis outbreak? You should be worried if you have lots of sick kids and staff. It's not uncommon to have a large number of cases across a few days, but if you have greater than 10 or a large number of cases in a single day, this is something to be worried about. If parents are reporting prolonged illness in children, such as greater than four days, this is not common with viral gastroenteritis. If household contacts are not getting sick, this increases our index of suspicion that it may not be a viral gastroenteritis outbreak. Because viral gastroenteritis is highly transmissible between people, it is common to see household contacts becoming unwell in a viral gastro outbreak. If children are becoming hospitalised, and requiring admission to a facility, this is also not common in a viral gastro outbreak. Presentations for dehydration are not unusual in viral gastro. However, prolonged hospitalizations are uncommon. Should you be notified by staff or families of stool specimen results in cases? Please note this when you contact the public health unit. We can review these, case, these results and advise you of any further information that would be of use to you during this time. If cases are reporting bloody diarrhoea, please notify the Public Health Unit as this would indicate to us that we may be dealing with something that is not viral gastroenteritis. Please report to Public Health if you have two or more cases of vomiting and or diarrhoea in staff and or children in a 48 hour period. And please do not hesitate to get in touch with public health should you have anything that is causing you concern that may indicate a gastroenteritis outbreak or that is occurring during your outbreak that is of concern. So in summary, gastroenteritis outbreak notifications to public health are really important. What we worry about here in public health are non-viral outbreaks. Thankfully, most outbreaks in a childcare facility are viral. However, there are a few key distinguishing features of non-viral outbreaks that you should keep an eye out for. These include prolonged illness and bloody diarrhea. This could suggest to public health that we are looking at a bacterial or foodborne outbreak. We are not expecting you to be clinicians in this space but you are public health's eyes and ears. The information you provide to us in your outbreak summaries assists us with looking at what can be occurring in your facility. We are here to help. If you have any feedback for our team regarding this new process, please get in touch. If you have any challenges or concerns during your outbreak, do not hesitate to get in touch with the public health unit for more assistance. Thank you for your time.